Hey guys, this is Harish Krishnan. Hi, have you ever wondered how we are able to communicate to different parts of the world? How organizations now going global, talking to each other? Have you ever wondered about this fact? A few years before, we were not able to even talk to people in the street next to us, right? Apart from going directly and talking to them. Now, how are we dealing this? How are you seeing this video right now, right in your hands, right? Have you ever wondered about all these facts? All right, let's get into some technical facts about understanding how this entire story works. These are because we have a concept called as information systems. How do information systems work? First up, we need to understand that there are a lot of people behind doing the entire thing. So if this video is right now in front of you, there are a lot of people who worked on this to bring you this. So a lot of people in the nature of analysts, in the nature of designers, in the nature of programmers and in the nature of end users have ultimately reached up to work on this particular video to ultimately bring it to your hands. So first up, the most important component of the information systems are people who are the backbone who drive this concept of delivering the content to you. Right, moving up next, what's the most important thing? Are you holding a mobile phone right now? Yeah, that's exactly what's called hardware and there are a lot of components inside your mobile phone in the nature of a motherboard, a processor and of course a speaker and all that stuff, right? So all that is called hardware with a lot of input devices. How are you using your phone? Are you able to swipe right and swipe left? Are you able to touch your phone? So which is what is the interface which is there with you? So coming up to component number two, we have hardware devices which are again classified into input devices, output devices, processing devices and of course storage devices. And it doesn't make it difficult for you to understand. It's very simple to understand the first half. What are you using right now? If it's a keyboard or a mouse, these are all what? Input devices. And going forward, what you can't see which happens inside the system is about the processing devices. You have some processing devices in the likes of a arithmetical logic unit, a control unit and a memory unit which do the entire work inside the system. Moving up next is to the storage devices where we talk about some volatile memory and non-volatile memory. Have you ever seen a system restart with exactly where you stopped when the power is shut down? No, right? It again starts completely afresh. Why does that happen? Because thanks to RAM, RAM doesn't have a volatile, I mean RAM doesn't have a non-volatile memory. It is absolutely volatile and once the power is shut down, the complete memory on RAM gets erased. So that's exactly why you are not able to continue from where you stopped. Look at the opposite side, you have something called as read-only memory, which is like a CD or a DVD where there's stable memory. That's absolutely non-volatile. So even if the content, I mean even if the power is turned off, the content doesn't get missed. So the internal memory of a computer consists of RAM and ROM and of course when you want a higher capability you are going to extend this by using secondary storage devices which in the likes of pen drives, flash drives, CDs, DVDs and of course hard disks. So we have seen three of those input, processing and storage devices and out next is the screen which you are seeing right now which could possibly be the output device. So a combination of all this makes the entire hardware setup which is making this entire content available to you. So we had people who are working behind this, component number two is the hardware. Component number three, right now are you using an Android or an iOS? If you are watching this on Apple, you are using iOS and if you are using it on any other device of running on Android, you are using the Google powered Android operating system to watch me right now. So which is what is called the system software or the operating system, which is one of the most important applications. The entire hardware is a worthless piece of plastic or silicon if there is no value addition to it in the name of software. Just like how human body requires blood to function, the computer systems require a software to function, which is what are in the likes of Windows, Linux, Unix, iOS, Android, all these are the operating systems which help a system function. So that is component number three for you, which is what is a software. And then the software also takes another turn. How are you able to do specific tasks? You may right now be watching me on YouTube and then YouTube is an exclusive application which helps you watch a lot of videos, which is what is called an application software. An application software is something which exactly delivers what the user needs. You want to you want to make yourself look better, you're using a photo editing software, that's an app software. You want to make 
a particular song player, you're using a media player, that's an app software. So software as a broad term is classified into two, which is what is a system software and an application software. A system software is the operating system, while right now the YouTube could be an application software which is satisfying your specific needs. So that's component number three. So we've seen three components, one being people who are helping this do, two the hardware, three the software. And now if so much of content needs to be delivered, you need a lot of data in this process, right? So data, databases, data warehouses, we got to set up all of these. What's data? Data is a raw collection of a lot of facts and figures brought together and put in the form of an entire repository, calling it a huge database. Have you ever wondered how is Google having every answer? Which is exactly why they have a huge repository of all the information so they're able to answer every question of yours. So one of the best examples of what a huge database is, is Google's database or Wikipedia's database. So you have a database at Google and I'm sitting right now in my place and how do I connect to Google place? Right, so that's exactly where we bring in component number five of the story, which is what networks is all about. Imagine, can you imagine a world without networks today? I don't think you're able to drop your phone for WhatsApp, or Facebook, or from YouTube, right? Thanks to networks, we're able to link in ourselves to different part of the world. A network is about a wired network or a wireless network, which are the two different types of networks that you can see. A wired network either uses a twisted pair, coaxial cable, or a fiber optic connectivity, while wireless networks cover the entire world using radio waves or infrared waves or microwaves that's it so that's the five set of components that you see for an information system so I hope you understand now the combination of all these five components is how you're able to convey and communicate every message to all parts revising all five here are people hardware software data and networks which help you communicate I hope this was informative this is Harish Krishnan thank you so much